trading requires a lot of monitoring and analysis because there's different prices on different exchanges and it becomes even more challenging in crypto because the markets in crypto or blockchain space moves so fast and that's where apis like jupyter swap api comes to the rescue where it helps you get the best possible code or best possible route for your token swaps while comparing different prices and uh, quotations from different decentralized exchanges and automated market makers. So that's what we will see in this video. We will create a trading bot using QuickNode's JupyterSwap API to get best possible routes for our token swap and swap the tokens. And by no means, this is a financial advice. This video is just for educational purposes and to show a use case for JupyterSwap API. So without any ado, let's jump into it. So this is QuickNode's Jupyter V6 Swap API, which is called Mattis, and it's a hosted Jupyter Swap API. And uh, since it's hosted on QuickNode's infrastructure, you don't have to worry about latency. Latency will be very low. And this API also supports Jupyter Price API, but that's still in beta. To install this add-on, you just have to go to your QuickNode dashboard and go to endpoints, find your Solana mainnet endpoint, go to add-ons, and then find the Mattis Jupyter V6 swap API and then install it from there. I already have it installed. And once you have it installed, it will look something like this. And then you can access your add-on from the dashboard by clicking on these three buttons and then going to dashboard. This will SSO and take you to the Jupyter swap API or with no Jupyter swap API dashboard where you will find your dest API URL. So now let's start making our bot. So for that, we will do npm in it in our desired repository or directory and then we will install a bunch of dependencies over here we are installing the jupyter client or the jupyter library which is jupe ag api then solana web 3js the dot n library and solana spl token library all right once it's installed let's open the directory in a code editor and create few new files first one will be dot end then bot dot ts then index dot ts all of our code for bot will go into bot dot ts and index dot ts will initialize the bot and use all the code we do in bot dot ts so in environment file we will need these environment variables the first one will be secret key which will be your Solana wallet secret key. This one will be our Solana endpoint or Solana mainnet endpoint, which will be our quick note Solana mainnet endpoint. And this will be your Metis endpoint or Metis rest endpoint, which you get from here. And never share your secret key with anyone and make sure to remove the secret key while uploading your code to GitHub or any public code sharing platforms. Now let me fill all of these details, like my secret key, my Solana mainnet URL from QuickNode and my Mattis URL from QuickNode as well. Now let's start adding stuff to our bot.ts file. First, we will do a bunch of imports where we are importing the file system path and a bunch of stuff from Solana Web3.js over here and a bunch of stuff from Jupyter library over here and get associated token address sync from Solana SPL token library. Then let's create some interfaces. Bot config will be used to create configuration for our bot, which will have Solana endpoint, Mathis endpoint, secret key, which will be used to generate our wallet and to sign transactions. Then first trade price, which will be the price of the token which we want to buy target gain percentage, which will be the gain percentage of the next token, which we want to buy. Check interval will be the intervals at which we want to check for token price changes. Initial input token will be the token using which we want to buy another token. And initial input amount will be the amount of token which we want to give to the bot to buy another tokens for then uh, interface for next trade so that we can execute more trades once a trade is completed then swap tokens 
will be used to define the tokens we can swap. And here we have added SOL and USDC. Then another interface is log swap arguments. This we will use to log data into a JSON file after a successful swap. And we will log data like input token, input amount, to output token, output amount, transaction ID, and timestamp. Now let's create a class called our bot class, which will have all the logic for our bot. So in here, first we are defining few variables, which will help us to track the state of our bot. For example, these will be used to get the Solana connection, the Jupyter Swap API, our wallet. These are USDC and solvents, the USDC public key or the token account, and the Sol and USDC balances for our wallet. Check interval, last check, and the price watch interval ID, target gain percentage, next trade, and waiting confirmation, which will check if the bot is waiting for any transaction confirmation or swap confirmation, which is by default set as false. And then we have one constructor. So this is how our constructor will look like. And in our constructor, we are initializing a new Solana connection. We are initializing a new Jupyter Swap connection. Then we are initializing our wallet from the secret key. Then we are getting the associated USDC token accounts from our wallet. And then we check if the target gain percentage and check intervals are provided or not. And if you remember, we have provided some default values for them, which is check intervals and target gain percentage over here. And then we prepare for next trade, where if the initial token was solved, then USDC will be the next input token. And if the output token was USDC, then the next output token will be sold. And then we get the amount of tokens used in the previous trade. And then we get the price of tokens in the previous trade. This is the init function where we log two messages. After first message, what we are doing is refresh balances and then logging the balance of SOL and USDC to command line. And then we are calling initialize price watch. So first let's see what refresh balances look like. Over here, we are using promise all settled to get the balances of SOL and USDC simultaneously. We are using get balance and get token account balance using our Solana connection to get the balances of the wallet for these tokens. And then we are setting the balances of the bot for SOL and USDC. If it's successful, if it's not successful, it will throw an error message. And if the SOL balance is less than 0.01 SOL, we will terminate the bot over here. And then initial price watch function. So the initiate price watch function, what it will do is it will check if the last check time is greater than check interval or not. And if it is, what it will do is if it will check if there is a transaction waiting for confirmation or not. And if not, it will call the get code function and evaluate code swap function. We will see what happens in those functions just now. So in get code function, what we are doing is we are just basically getting the code from the Jupyter API using the code get method of the Jupyter API. And if no code is found, we will lock down an error. So in evaluate code and swap function, what we are doing over here is basically getting the difference of uh, the code out amount and the next trade threshold. And if it's positive, we will execute the swap. It basically means that the amount of token we are getting out of swap should be greater than the amount of tokens we need as the initial token for the next one. Then in the execute swap function, we are doing a whole lot of things. So first, what we are doing is we are getting the swap instructions from the Jupyter API. And then we are using the received instruction data to convert them to transaction instructions. And we are doing that using instruction data to transaction data function, which we defined earlier over here. So basically what we are doing is we are flattening the instructions and removing the instructions which may be null or undefined so that our transaction is much more efficient. Then we are getting balances using the address lookup tables and then creating a Solana transaction where we are passing the public key, the recent block hash, which we get over here, then passing the instructions in the wallet, as well as the address lookup accounts. Then we are signing the transaction using our wallet and then sending the wrong transaction 
using our Fecknode Solana endpoint. And if there is an error in the transaction processing, we are logging that dead error. And then we are calling post transaction processing function. So in post transaction processing function, what we are doing is we are calling update next trade function. We are calling refresh balances function to refresh the balances of the bot. And then we are logging the swap. So we saw that uh, interface log swap. We also have a function for that, which is here. So basically we are logging all the information about the current swap in a JSON file. And uh, talking about update next trade, we are basically just switching the tokens. So for example, if uh, input token was SOL in the previous trade, it will be USDC in the next trade. And we are also setting up the next trade threshold, which means that if we used 10 USDC to buy 0.1 SOL in the previous trade and the gain threshold was 15%, then it means that our next trades input token will be 0.1 SOL and the target threshold will be 11.5 USDC. So the bot won't execute the trade until we get a quotation for 11.5 USDC. And now let's look at our index.ts file. So in our index.ts file, we are importing a bunch of stuff from Solana Web 3.js first, and then we are importing our bot and swap token interfaces from our bot.ts file. And then we are importing .env library so we are processing the dot n variables from dot n file and then we are also setting some default configuration if the apis in our environment variable faces some issue we can use the default values and in our main function and in our main function we are first writing a if statement that if there is no secret key in the environment variable log an error or if it exists then save it in decode secret key by first parsing it into JSON format and then saving it in decode secret key. Then in const bot, which is the new instance of the bot, we are processing the Solana endpoint, then Matis or Jupyter Swap API endpoint. Then secret key will be from decoded secret key. In our first trade price, we are setting the amount which we want to buy using our bot. And then target gain percentage is the percentage we want to gain for the next token and over here we are setting it as 1.5 percent which means that our next trade will only execute if we gain 1.5 percent from the previous trade and then over here we are setting the initial input token which is usdc and the amount of initial input token we are giving to the bot which is one usdc over here and you also have to take into account the decimals of the token and then we are running the bot over here and then calling the main function now let's run the bot this is just for the demo so ts node index.ts and this is how the bot looks like and now it's listening for prices and finding parts so now let me stop the bot so this is how you can use quick nodes jupyter swap api to get codes and swap tokens and uh, this was just one example or one use case but you can use this API anywhere if you want to create your own decentralized exchange or if you want to find the efficient route for your swaps. You'll find all the relevant links along with the code used in the video in the description below. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the Quicknode YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.